Yes. Congratulations. If you're watching this video, you have survived. You are alive. You're in the process of being rejuvenated. Full illumination is happening as for your mind and the thoughts about yourself and how you respect yourself. The confidence you have in yourself. The self-esteem that has been witnessed mentally, socially, how you are respecting yourself in your immediate environment is having a tremendous and rapid upgrade, which wasn't so quick, but it's going to feel that way. The full moon in Taurus is conjunct Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus in Taurus is really ruling that 10th house no matter who you are. And this is the house of maturity. This is the house of time. And Taurus is the mountain that stands in time and watches everything and everybody change. And so with Uranus and Taurus conjunct, Uranus and Taurus ruling that 10th house is saying, you've watched your parents long enough. You've watched people that you idol, your role models long enough to understand what was beneficial by observing them through time for my own self-esteem, my own self-worth and how I think of myself, how I positively think of myself. And what did I learn from them that made me feel like I negatively thought about my self-worth or left my own comfort zones thinking this would be better for me because my role model or my guardian did this. And you're realizing to change your mind it ultimately your perception on this full moon. When it's opposite the sun in Scorpio, it is a full destruction of anything that is not intimate to you. Intimate in this instance being I see into me. Intimacy, I see into me. And the sun in Scorpio rules the 10th house as well, another house of maturity from a different angle. And so we're being asked to mature with our emotional reactions and learn to watch them from the mind. And the mind in this instance is what connects us to God. Okay, you reach and you see and you visualize God from the mind. Every image you have is technically fictional, but it's true to you. And that's where we have our faith. And so there's a tremendous severing that is happening during this time. And the severing is everything that has stolen your joy, that made you feel like you haven't been able to just be your self, that baby that smiles bright like a diamond, that voices itself, that takes care of its needs by crying when it needs something and saying 333 on screen. If you're watching this, comment 333 on screen saying, I am taking care of myself. I am nurturing myself in brand new ways. And I'm severing the old way of how I nurture myself with food, with content, with good sex, with great relationships, and with harmonic and fair, well-balanced exchanges where what you'll find is this is a very karmic position that this is happening something called atmakarka and it literally means a karmic punishment a burning of the soul and you're going to find that any energetic exchange that was not exactly that energetic and balanced a sense of harmony as for equilibrium you'll find all right, I'm willing to cut away these social values. And in fact, this full moon is doing that. It is looking at my social connections and anything that is not divinely just, you're gonna see, especially within your relationships and business, as well as love and your friendships, you're gonna see them come to a close. You're gonna see them come to an ending. And those that were just, it's important right now to see what is presently happening on this full moon in Taurus, okay? The moon in Taurus says right now, look and observe logically, practically what 
is in my life in the moment that makes me feel safe and secure and whole? And how do I, within myself, view myself as somebody worth respecting, okay, worth valuing? How do I see all the traumas that I've been through leading to this full moon? And how they've strengthened me and how I am not a victim or a survivor. I am somebody thriving because of my ability to tolerate the intolerable, which is what the moon in Taurus is saying. But the full moon in Taurus is saying, now you get to see that beautiful image. Now, on the same day of the full moon in Taurus, we have Saturn going direct. 555 on screen. Drop 555 down in the chat, okay, uh, saying that I value myself. And just say that in the chat. I value myself. I respect myself. Say that in the chat with a 555. Timestamp that so others can benefit and see. Now, the same day Saturn is going direct in Pisces. And Saturn in Pisces is ruling the 11th and the 10th house. And what this says is, man, the future is bright. The future is what I make it. The future is what I imagine. The future is everything that God is showing me, asking me to be present with, asking me to let go of an old dream about what I thought I wanted, okay? Now, because we got to look at the full moon in Taurus, we got to look at what's happening in Venus. And right now, Venus is in Capricorn. So check out my all signs for Venus and Capricorn, all right? And you will get an understanding of your forecast for each of the 12 zodiac signs for Venus and Capricorn. I'll do my best to timestamp this. Hit the thumbs up and the likes button. And if you're brand new and you're liking it so far, subscribe, comment in the chat, help the channel, help the algorithm, help your boy get up there. Seven, seven on screen, okay? It means have faith, have trust, all right? Trust is a very powerful thing. And Venus and Capricorn, uh, let me check my note for half a second. I didn't write it, of course, but Venus and Capricorn, okay, okay, Venus and Capricorn is ruling the 10th and the 5th house, and this is saying, hey, look, you know, you stud, you goat, look how high you've climbed, look at how much you've achieved, can you recognize yourself, okay, in the way in which you praise and honor other people you see as an authority figure, other people you see as Someone strong in your life, someone stable, someone impenetrable, someone who cannot be defeated, someone who you admire their, their rawness, their authenticity, their savagery. You admire their ability to win against all odds. You admire how victory is theirs no matter what life throws at them, no matter how bad it is. The full moon in Taurus is saying, look, with this Venus here, admire that victory. So check again the all signs for my Venus Capricorn. You get a better idea about that. And it's saying, make sure at this point in time that you don't prioritize your core commitments, which really is aligned with your wounds, is aligned with your traumas. You're committed to something because your, your mother was committed to it, because your father was committed to it, because your sister was committed to it. But now you're starting to witness through time, as you stayed still through all of these experiences with the mind and logic and practicality and pragmatism, you're starting to witness time out. I'm committed to something that's actually not true to me. It's not authentic to me. And Venus and Capricorn during this time, this matters because Capricorn is ruled by who? Saturn. And on the same day of the full moon in Taurus, who's going direct? Saturn is direct. Saturn in Pisces is going direct. So Capricorn is gaining strength. It's gaining power. Capricorn is a carnal energy. So it's gaining momentum. It's moving away from what was once your center. Your center that was allowed out of alignment and outdated. As for you basically being inauthentic because you were aligning with the old self. Okay, the trapped self, the, the parts of your mind, the parts of your social wellness, your, you, you know, your social economic status was tied to an old version that it's like, yo, you're wealthier than this. You have, you're rich. Okay, you are rich. Look at your life today. Look how rich and authentic and pleasurable your life is now look at your travels look at the home you're in look at the radiance that you formed you are not your traumas 
You are not your dot, 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 what you were. You got to fill in the blanks. So comment what you're not anymore and comment what you are now becoming currently and presently are. That's what this full moon in Taurus is about. It wants you to sever away that old identity. An identity is connected to music that you listen to. It's connected to foods that you eat. It's connected to the type of people you are attracted to. It's connected to the way you view wealth. Whether you feel, ah, as a spiritual entrepreneur, like I can't charge, you know, or you, the other day I was listening to music and I heard this song and I was like, I tried to delete it. I was like, man, delete this, get this off my downloads. It was just so much of a disruption to my nervous system, right? Because the third house rulership of the moon in Taurus, this full moon in Taurus is ruling the third house for everybody in the world. And that's about some of the things you listen to. It's about the things you absorb. It's about the things that you learn from. It's about the things that are mentoring you, 1111 on screen. And music that you listen to is mentoring you. It is shaping your neural pathways. And I was listening to this and I was like, man, this doesn't make my nervous system feel good. This actually makes me feel very anxious. This makes me feel very violent. This makes me feel very uncomfortable. This makes me feel like I'm not this person today. And I like quickly turned it. And that's actually like the third time I turned that. So now it's like, now, now you need to get deleted. So this is what I mean when I say it's time to sever. And so whatever house this is happening for you, that's the area of life that you're going to be severing things. But understand that right now there's two major things. The full moon in Taurus is trining Pluto and Capricorn. So, you know, you have the moon conjunct Uranus, which is one thing. Now, the moon is in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, and is both going to be trining this harmonious, beautiful aspect of freedom, of freedom, of freedom. Because what does Uranus do? Uranus is the great liberator. It is freedom. On Pluto at 29 degrees, which has already left its retrograde, it's already moving forward. Okay. Oh, snap. And so when you look at Pluto in the 11th house, ruling at 11th house at 29 degrees, that karmic degree. You know, that, that, that burning of the soul right now is asking you to uh, learn from your lessons and sever away anything that your wisdom is showing you you need to do. One, two, three, four on screen. You are climbing the ladder. You are on the way up. And 11th house is the highest you can get. So Pluto and Capricorn really in 11th house. You can't get any higher. Okay? The 11th house is the way, is the house where we experiment with our connection with spirit, source, God, ancestors. Okay? Our tribe. And realize that our real karmic mission is not to be with a tribe that is of, you know, equal status with us, but to respect that you're here karmically to support people that are in a position that you once graduated from. And it's time to do your part and pull them up without pulling yourself down. As long as you can continue to ascend, if you can't help somebody else without pulling yourself down, then you can't help them. But if you're able to support them and raise the frequency of the collective, raise the frequency and share with your angels and your dragon guides and your animal oracles and your ancestors are sharing, you can listen to the grand message on this full moon and you can receive an updated vision, an updated understanding, okay, and be essentially positively provoked to align and even attach to a new positive neural pathway, a new positive network of optimism, of strength, of authenticity. This full moon in Taurus, I think is gonna be tremendously underrated. Once I realized Optima Karka was in the mix, which is that burning of the soul, there's going to be a great splitting, okay? From the memories that have kept you the old you, away from the blessed and new identity. Hit the thumbs up and the likes button. Consider joining our membership if that's for you. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, you can get a one-time reading with me one-on-one. -on -one. You can go do some healings. We could do angelic Reiki and do some healing on your soul if you feel like that's something you need. Or you can work with me with the shaman, shamanism one-on-one -on -one over you know, 12 weeks. And that program is outlined. You got to apply for that. This is your astral shaman inspiring brilliance with all call practices and spiritual accountability and we're doing that in our memberships i offer you and and, and request of you to clap for yourself <laughs> pat yourself on the back because not only have you survived you are thriving and it's time to update that vision 
and realize I am winning. I am winning. I am winning. I am the greatest success. I am here in the present moment in the now and I breathe calmly, gently, and I exhale everything that does not belong. I love you. I'll see you soon.